Yeah, exactly. So given with what you said, are you even more hopeful that this new administration will be more environmental friendly or will be doing you know, more environment uh, laws that will be benefiting our environment in the next four years? I definitely do think that. I, I know we've already agreed to join, rejoin the Paris Accord, so our new administration has um, indicated that that is something that they're going to be doing in the very first you know, 100 days of their new administration. Um, and so that's really a promising uh, indicator of how they're going to be treating uh, environmental legislation going forward as well, uh, because if we're not part of the conversation, we can't be part of the solutions. So I really am glad to see that we are moving back a little bit more towards more environmental protections um, in the United States, uh, especially since it's so important to our natural wildlife spaces that we have. Um, Alaska, for example, um, our previous administration was considering selling that off to oil and gas uh, company and I for drilling. And I personally think that since that's one of our last natural, like huge wilderness locations, I, I would hate to see that happen. So I, I'm hopeful as well that our administration does not move forward with those plans um, that they had had from the previous administration. Um, and since, you know, they have indicated that they are looking to increase more green jobs they're in increasing green um, infrastructure and then also rejoining the Paris Accord. That does give me a lot of yes. positive feelings um, for the environmental aspect of this administration. You know, you talk about uh, you talk about uh, people sh definitely um, definitely or should be joining the conversation about you know about top environmental topics like climate change deforestation global warming so how do you feel when this administ this uh this outgoing administration seems to be out of touch with with reality considering that they treat um the it treats uh the global climbing the global climbing the global <laughs> warming problem or the climate change problem non-existent mythical mm -hmm. and even you know our or even would criticize activists like Greta Thunberg that um it's really not a relevant issue to be discussed yes well I think that the problem the old administration had is that they didn't want to be the ones contributing the vast amount of funds to it they they wanted other countries to be contributing more funds to this cause but in my opinion like I said as we are stewards of this earth it is our responsibility if we have the resources and we have the ability to help the environment i think that that is our responsibility as global citizens uh so it's again as far as the people who believe though that it is mythical or it isn't real um i again you never win an argument when you are yelling at someone. So the best way to really convince them is to show them with facts and figures and to talk to them logically and calmly. And again, one of the things that I think that helps make people understand is that immersive experience into nature. So I think that if, if someone really didn't believe in what I was saying, I would say, hey, do you want to come on one of my cleanups? And you can see just firsthand on this one, two and a half mile stretch of trail that we're going to go walk on how much litter there is and then also showing them how many endangered plants and animals also call that same two and a half mile stretch home that might be negatively affected so kind of showing them with facts and figures and then also giving them the experience to go into nature and to fall in love with nature because i truly feel that that respect comes first from love you can't uh, you you can't teach someone to love something just by giving them facts and figures you have to also immerse them in nature so that they can really appreciate what it is we're protecting in the first place uh, because without that love then they don't really they think about the things that they do love so they think about themselves they think about their family they think about their financial uh, gains that they can have but when you add in the beauty of nature um, to the things that they love, it's much easier to 
um, convince them to protect it because it becomes something that you would protect the same as you would protect your family if it's something that you love. So I think it starts with exposing them to the beauty of nature, teaching them with the facts and figures, and then making sure you're doing that in a calm and concise way. Because if we are combative and like, oh, well, if you don't think that the global warming is real, like you're crazy, you know, like that approach does not work for people. If you want to change someone's mind, you really have to get on their level, get to know them and try a different approach than yelling because you will never convince someone of your point if you are just uh, isolating them from you. Uh, so that would be my advice for people who are approaching, uh, people who believe global warming is a myth. Take them into nature, show them what it is we're protecting and teach them the facts and figures to support the evidence of global warming after that point. So do you think if you were to sit down with a world leader and say the same things that you have been telling in this interview, would be, you would be able to convince them how climate change could be a serious threat, uh, could be a serious greenhouse emission? Yes. Well, I think that, could it's, be. Sorry. again, it's about finding out what's important to that person. So with my background with environment, environmental economics, even if someone is thinking about uh, well, what's best for the economy? You can show that there are ways for the economy to thrive. And actually, it is better for the economy if we are doing things more sustainably. Because eventually, if we keep doing things uh, the way we're doing, there will be this big bubble that will burst. And our economy will fail anyways, because we won't have the natural resources that are needed to create our products we won't be able to have the infrastructure that would be able to support us. People would be getting sick left and right from pollution. Uh, so it, in general, if we continue on the same path we're on, it might be good for the next 100 years for our economy. It might be good for the now. But eventually, that will have a big bubble burst because it's not something that's sustainable long term. We need to be finding ways that we can build our economy now to be sustainable into the future so that our future generations aren't dealing with the consequences of our uh, inactivity as far as finding these new sustainable ways. Um, so it is important to show that you can really relate to someone um, in many different ways to get the same point across. So it would really depend on getting to know the person I'm talking to, what's important to them, and showing them how uh, protecting the environment would also be beneficial for them and their goals as well. Um, but again, I think it's really important to bring people into nature to develop that love because that's the easiest way to get people on our side and on board with the message of climate preservation and sustainability. I wish Mr. at USA has a connection to the U.S. government so, so they could take out those officials to nature trips, field trips, so they could appreciate nature more and probably curb the problem of deforestation as well, considering it's one of those, it's one of the, the causes. That's why, you know, yes. mm -hmm. that's why animals animals have been vanishing, have been non, um, vulnerable species and animals have been vanishing into mm -hmm. the wildlife. No. Yes. Are you very and, hopeful uh, we, with that? Um, well, at least in Maine, we're very lucky that out of all the states, Maine actually has the highest percentage of forestation out of any state in the United States. So I think that Maine really has uh, a great example to show the other states in the United States that we are able to have a good booming economy and also preserve our nature at the same time. Uh, so it, it's something that we can kind of use as that roadmap. Um, but in general, we need to make sure we're preserving at least one third of our forests on this earth, one third of the land on this earth for forestation, because that is one of the biggest ways we can combat global warming because with more plants, they are able to process more CO2 into oxygen um, and kind of and help with lowering the pollution that we have on this earth. So that is so important that we make sure that we keep some space, at least, like I said, a third of the land on our earth uh, for wildlife and for forestation. And because that not only gives animals a habitat, but it also helps clean our air and is mutually beneficial for both the plants, animals, and humans who call this world home. Wow. 
true. Oh, I wish there are more people like you in the in oh. our government. I mean, especially in that area of government where who's responsible for crafting environmental policies. I swear, I mean, you should work for the government there. <laughs> Well, that's actually a goal of mine someday. Uh, so my dad's actually on the town council in our hometown of Standish. Uh, and so he kind of inspired me to get involved more with my local government. Uh, so actually in January, um, there the San Diego Seal Society, which I also volunteer with, is going to be presenting a video that I shot and produced um, that will be asking for uh, the town council members in Standish to have rangers present year round uh, at the locations of uh, La Jolla Point where those seals and sea lions are during their pupping season. Because where they are, people get very close. Oftentimes people even pet them, they throw rocks at them. So they don't really have that protection because there's no barrier in place. So what we're doing is we are actually working with our local government to ask for more uh, protections we put in place for those animals in that location. Uh, and then also I've written to my local government uh, many times. Uh, one of the most recent ones, there was an endangered butterfly whose habitat was at risk from a development company. We wrote in a, a bunch of uh, my friends and everyone wrote in to our local government asking them to reject that proposal. They ended up rejecting that proposal, thankfully, so that butterfly's habitat was preserved. So my biggest thing is, that I always advocate for is get involved with your local government. That is the best way for you to be able to make real change and have your voice heard because they actually listen to their constituents at the local level and much more consistently than they even would at the top. And it's the local government that makes the major changes within your community. So by being involved and going to your town council meetings, understanding what proposals are being put in place that might affect the environment, that's all so important. Uh, and I myself someday, I, my goal is I do want to be on the environmental committee in San Diego. So that is a goal of mine in the future. So maybe you'll see me a little bit further up as well in politics someday. Um, but for now, my goal would be to work in, as a um, in the local government um, on the environmental committee. I'm glad that this new pageant system is giving you more direction in life. See? You're already you already have a vision five years from now, ten years from now of what you want to be, who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And it all relates it all stems from your love for the environment, from your from your love for your for exactly. Milo and his even, fellow animals. Yeah. Yeah, even within my career as a financial advisor, uh, so one of the reasons why I want to get that CFA designation is because it would give me the tools I would need to create my own portfolio. Um, and so I want to invent uh, a green portfolio myself so that uh, my clients can invest in companies that are doing good for the environment um, and are socially responsible, sustainable products. So I want to cultivate a portfolio for my clients that is a green portfolio. So in general, I mean, like I said, the, this has always been a passion of mine since I was a little girl. Environment uh, protection has always been so close to my heart, but it's been really the Miss Earth USA organization that has really allowed me to grow so much more in my advocacy and my work. And, and it really has been able to give me a spotlight and a, a voice to really speak about the things that I'm so passionate about. And I, I'm so thankful I found this pageant system because I never felt as if the message that I was giving was as well received in any other system because my advocacy has always been environmental in nature. So, um, and I've always felt like, it, oh, like, well, we don't really care about that. And so being able to be in an organization that also is so passionate about the environment has really emboldened me to be able to take more steps and do more with my advocacy than ever before. Uh, like I, I mean, I always kind of did it more for myself and now I'm able to share that with other people and share my work. Uh, and that has been the most amazing gift that Miss Earth USA has given me is just that platform to be able to share the, what I have been passionate about since I was a little girl. Oh, wow. Just, well, I have two questions first. You said a lot. I have two questions. And, my, you know, uh, wait, uh, you said earlier that, you know, your goal is to get, uh, uh, 
create that green portfolio where you'll you could encourage investors to invest in um green green companies so do you think do you think those green companies will ever be listed in the stock exchange do you think there will be a demand for it there or already is. So there's is already it? many uh, companies who are already publicly traded that do uh, seek out uh, more sustainable ways to do things, whether it even being uh, through their packaging, uh, through the how they pick their materials, where they choose to set up shop. So all these things can be contributed to um, what would qualify them for being part of that green a portfolio do they donate also do they set off their carbon uh footprint so there's all these different uh qualifications that um i would have to consider um, but there already are many companies out there who do have more of a sustainable approach and i do think that as we move forward um in our economy that there will be more demand we're already seeing there's more demand um for uh green products especially in the state where i am in california it is such a huge demand for environmentally friendly brands um and i've even decided to start my own swimwear company uh and i'm instead of sourcing uh materials new plastic we're using recycled plastic from ocean waste and recycled bottles to be able to make the material that the bathing suits we made from so fine and there's many companies that are doing very similar things to that so it's really just about finding them and then directing people to put their funding towards those companies so that they can grow and kind of push our economy as a whole to be a little bit more green in the future so it is really about just kind of one finding what companies would qualify and then two directing the funding needed to be able to help those companies grow for our economy wow no words just wow i'm speechless i mean i can only think i I suddenly got excited. My only comment is that I suddenly got excited about the company that uh, the that the swimwear company or the swimwear line that you just founded. Do we get to will we get to see that next month during Miss so USA? I was, I was hoping that it was going to be ready, um, but unfortunately, um, I won't be ready um, quite for a stage production. Um, but I will be posting some uh, videos of my and photos of my first um, piece that I've made. Uh, but I don't think it will be ready in time, unfortunately, just with COVID uh, and my manufacturers is kind of taking a little bit longer. And I do want to make sure when I do this, I do it right. So I'm trying to even source, you know, the rubber inside to be more sustainable, all the metal clasps and everything. I'm trying to get that to be more sustainable. So it is a big research project. Uh, and and it, and with manufacturing in general moving a lot more slowly um, because of COVID. Uh, so it, it probably won't be ready. It, it might be, so I won't say for sure you won't see it. Uh, it's kind of on the cusp. It might actually work, but um, as of now, I'm not planning on wearing the swimsuit anymore for the prelims, uh, but I will be showing that very soon on in the beginning of 2021. So. Stay tuned. I'm really excited to show you guys what I've been working on, um, and uh, hopefully you guys like it. <laughs> but <laughs> if not, I'll love them, <laughs> and I'll be wearing, you know, a sustainable swimsuit. So at least I'll be designing it for myself as well, and for my friends who are really excited about that. Many of my friends in San Diego. I mean, we spend a lot of time on the beach out there. And a lot of them are also very environmentally conscious. So my friends are really excited about the swimmer line coming out in 2021 as well. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see, but hopefully it's done in time for the pageant, but no promises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, listening at you right now, we're nearing, no, we've been talking for more than an hour now and I have to wrap this up and because uh, I probably might be doing something else, but you know, listening at you right now, you know, I can't believe that Miss USA and Miss World bypassed you considering how eloquent, articulate you are when it comes to to your causes and advocacies. I mean, hello, top 30 Miss World. I mean, I can't believe that. So my, my question to you right now is, what do you think makes you this time, makes you different this time around such that we can see that you are already acting like a winner as early as now? 
Well, I think that the biggest thing is the fact that I feel like I am finally in the right system. So I, even though one, yes, I, I was young when I did Miss USA. So, and that was the first big pageant I had ever done being a small town girl from Maine. Maine's pageants, they're not really that strong. So I, that was a little bit of a learning experience for me at Miss USA. But then at Miss World, again, the advocacy's focus has always been more humanitarian in nature, whereas my advocacy has always been environmental. Uh, so it's really, I think it's been about the fact that I finally feel 100% confident because I don't feel like I have to change myself for this system. I don't have to kind of alter my approach for my advocacy to kind of fit into their mold. For Miss Earth USA, this this is me. And I finally feel like I'm able to showcase who I am 100%. And when you do that, that's when you show your most beautiful self. And so I'm glad that that's translating. I'm glad that you guys are seeing that, that this is giving me so much more confidence just because I'm able to be 100% who I am with this system. And that is so empowering. So I'm really excited that I found Miss Earth USA when I did, not only because I didn't want to go to a pageant system before I was ready. So with this one, it fits me so perfectly that I would almost have been nervous. I actually did Miss World first because I was nervous to go into Miss Earth too soon because I wanted to make sure I had all of my bases covered. I wanted to make sure that I was 100% ready for this job. Uh, so I was able to get that experience by going and, and being at an international pageant in a different system that I knew wasn't necessarily the right fit for me, but it was a learning experience so that I would be ready for the right opportunity when it arrived with Miss Earth. So I'm very excited that I found this system when I did, and this has always been my plan um, since I was at Miss USA. My goal was always to go to Miss Earth one day. So this has been about four years in the making. Uh, so I'm really excited to finally be competing in a system that truly honors everything that I love most about myself and my advocacy, because that's when you can show your true beauty to the world. Wow. You were, I think God made you to be part of this, you know, oh. probably you're, you're, you're probably you're meant for this, right? That's, so there's a reason why. It feels like. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, feels, it feels like, like this feels like, like it. yeah, fits like a glove mm -hmm. to you. Perfectly mm -hmm. suits you. Your strengths, mm -hmm. your caliber as a contestant. Everything falls, you know, falls right smack to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Exactly, and I and, think that we all have that divine ooh. timing. We always. I think that God puts us in opportunities when it is right for us. Uh, so I'm really glad that I went through my whole pageant journey prior because now I do feel 100% confident in who I am. I obviously is stronger than ever has been before. And I'm in a system that truly values the work that I'm doing. So it, everything just feels like it's clicked into place. Uh, so I'm just really hoping that I get that opportunity to represent the U.S. at Miss Earth, especially with our amazing team at Miss Earth USA behind me. I've never had a team behind me before, even at Miss World. I didn't have really any help preparing for that international pageant. So being part of a team is something that I definitely will not take for granted, and especially the amazing, amazing team we have at Miss Earth USA. I want to meet those people from Miss Earth USA organization. I suddenly began, be, began to be interested. You know, yes. Lisa and every, even Andrea Jabao, Miss Earth USA 2017 has been saying a lot of nice things about oh. the organization. Oh. Well, it's yeah. wonderful because they were all former pageant girls themselves. They were past title holders, is a fully female board of directors. So they really know what it's like to be a contestant and what their contestants need. Uh, so they were able to make sure it's a good experience for all of us, uh, not just for their winners, but for every single contestant in the Miss Earth USA organization. So I think that this is the next big pageant in the United States. And so I'm really excited to be a part of that. Uh, and hopefully we can kind of build off of the legacy that uh, Lindsay has already established. Uh, and 
really drive home the fact that Miss Earth USA is the pageant to be in in the United States going forward. It has the most relevant mission uh, and the best team that you could ask for. So I'm really hoping to be able to be a part of the growth of this system. And I've even told them I want to be a director someday also afterwards. I, I, I think that that would be the most uh, the best fit for me later on in life because I want to keep pageantry in my life forever. It's been such a huge blessing to me. Uh, but now, after being a contestant, I want to give that same experience to another girl later on. So I'm hoping to be able to be a director once I am done competing. So you'll see me in a few years still um, being part of the Miss Earth USA organization. You can mark my words on that. Uh, so I'm just really, really excited to be part of the growth of the system in the United States. And I just can't wait for the pageant in uh, January. It's going to be the best birthday gift in the world. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, oh. January yeah. 10, right? You're January 10th. So I will get oh my God. I'll be spending uh, my birthday in uh, Orlando uh, with my family. And then we'll be competing for the pageant. So it'll be ringing in my 27th year of life in the best way possible. So I'm really, really excited for that opportunity. And to get back on stage again is something I've definitely been missing as well. Wow. Back to back feels. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all I can say. And all our view, all my viewers could agree. Uh, Roderick Cruz Zabala says, Marisa has the intelligence and authenticity that Miss Earth is looking for. I will not compare her with the other winners because I want her to gain the credit because she is indeed deserving. I want to see her come. Eh, I want her to see her to become the next. Huh? I want to see her come next Miss Earth Finals and take home the crown. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. I appreciate your support. My broad tech guy, Fonsi, whom you just met earlier, says that he, it, he feels like he's watching and listening to a TED Talk. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> such a huge compliment. Thank you. Must watch. Linnea has a question here. Would you mind answering? Mm -hmm. um, it has something to do with food security. In different countries, farmers are looking at different ways. Some are rich. For a lot of countries, farmers are in the poverty life. How will you make farmers feel of their importance in our everyday lives and put much dignity in their work? Well, it's so important, the work that they do, uh, just because without farmers, we wouldn't have the food to eat. And so to be able to make sure that that is a respected uh, position is so important. So California, where I live, is known as the bread basket of the United States. So we do have a quite an extensive agricultural uh, component to our economy in California. And it's just really important to uh, reiterate to uh, young students that that is a viable career path. It is, is such an honorable work. Uh, and I feel like oftentimes in the United States, all too often we kind of focus on uh, pushing our youth into uh, college and into sales type roles. When in reality, the most important work we could be doing is actually to be tending this earth and to be making providing food for others. So it's really important to have that respect for that um, for for that position. Um, and then at the same time, it, we need to also be finding ways to be able to make their job more efficient. So developing more technology to use less water to to help the plants grow um, and to be able to do that more efficiently, so they can get more usage out of their land. Um, was also so important so that they can have um, more uh, funding from their efforts. And then I know also in the United States, and maybe we could implement this around the world as well, is that the government actually pays uh, subsidies to farmers in the United States to help support them growing uh, their crops and also keeping the prices affordable for the general population. So I think that's something that maybe the United States could help out not only within our country, but around the world is by helping contribute to those farmers and helping lower the prices of food while also increasing the return that the farmers get from their efforts because it is so vital and so important to our entire world's economy. All right. Wow. True. Yeah. We really need to take care of our farmers' plight, you know, give them the benefits so that they will be able to be productive, you know, to do their job and be um, 
and be and to be able to really do what they're supposed to do, which is to provide food security for the whole country, right? So Linnell has a follow-up question. We're nearing the end. We're so, I'm supposed okay. to end, but Linnell has plenty of questions. He has another follow-up question here. What do you have to say about how our government is handling the COVID-19 situation? What would you have done differently had you been in a position of power? Yeah, the U.S. has still a lot of million of cases mm -hmm. of COVID cases. And, you know, are you, are you guys, um, are you guys uh, done with the second wave? Have you been through that uh, second wave yet? Or So we went into another lockdown uh, in California. Uh, Maine uh, just had its highest amount of cases just the other day. Uh, so we still, it's very active still in the United States. And I think that the main issue is, um, is the fact that because we are separated by state by state and each state can have different regulations surrounding it, unfortunately that creates an inconsistency in the rules that we need to follow as citizens of the United States. So I think if I was to be handling it as a government, I would have had a more of a central uh, plan in place from the very uh, top federal government that would help dictate how we combat this virus as a national level rather than just by state by state. Because with each state having different regulations, it's really hard to know what it is you need to be doing. I know in California, even every single different county has different regulations and rules. So you could be living in San Diego and so could your friend, but they're in a different um, uh, neighborhood in San Diego and they have completely different rules. So it makes it so hard as, you know, the regular person, the regular citizen to even know what rules there are to be following. So I think there needed to be a little bit more of a central planning. There needed to be a pandemic response team from the federal level that had a game plan that would be able to send down those rules to each of the states and all the um, counties. And that way we could have had a little bit more of a cohesive message throughout the entire process. I think that the reason why in the United States has been so bad as it has been is just because there hasn't been consistent messaging on what it is and what isn't acceptable right now. Uh, so I would say we just need a more central approach to be able to combat this in a more efficient manner. Um, but unfortunately, in the United States, we, we definitely uh, do pride our state rights. Um, uh, and that is just part of our culture. So I think that that contributed to the reason why it was more fragmented rather than being a, a cohesive uh, approach to this. Um, so I, I think that we just need to kind of reevaluate that when it comes to some, most things, we can still have those state rights reign supreme. But uh, for a case such as a pandemic, I think it really needed to come from the central government um, and uh, giving very clear guidelines so that everyone knew exactly what it was they needed to do and there wasn't this big confusion. Hopefully the new administration could work something out, mm -hmm. could yes. come up with a better plan to solve this problem. Because we're looking at you guys, you're the you're the superpower yes. of the world. <laughs> Everyone yes, will follow whatever, by example. So whatever yes. rhetoric or yeah guidelines <laughs> or policies that you'll be doing, you you guys have always been setting the tone and direction for the rest of the nations to follow. Yeah. So yes, um, there's another one here. Um, Ralph Sambat is reading you. I don't know if you know him because he says, "Hello, Marisa. How are you? Good luck, and see you in Orlando next month." Oh, thank you, Ralph. So appreciate that. And I'm so excited to hear that you'll be coming to Orlando. Oh, can't wait to be able to see like some of the fans in person. I know things will be a little bit different. We'll be behind masks most of the time, except for when we're on stage. But I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone come out and support us in Orlando in January. All right. Thank, thank you, Ralph. Oh, I'm jealous as early as now. I hope I could also meet you in person. So on that note, Miss Marisa, thank you so much for gracing this interview. Wow, we spent an hour and a half just by talking oh, environmental you. stuff. I can't believe it. Thank I feel like an so intellectual much. after this interview. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciated the opportunity to share my story and share my advocacy with you. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see how I do in this Earth USA. I'm getting so excited for the pageant. So I really appreciate all your support and just the opportunity to speak to you and then to all the fans as well. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's 
but longer than expected, but I had such a wonderful, wonderful time talking with you. So last question. I uh, Can you answer, fill in the blank? I am Marisa Page Butler and I am blank. Well, I am a beauty for a cause, as we would say at Miss Earth. Uh, and I think that that is so important just because is using our skills, our voice, our leadership abilities to make a real change in the world. Beauty is from your actions. It's not necessarily from your aesthetics. And so I hope to really lead by example with my actions in showing that who I am as a person is beautiful. And I hope that you see that. And I hope that you feel that. And um, I hope that it inspires you as well to be a beauty for a cause because it's such an important and relevant message that Miss Earth is sharing across the world. Okay. Last, last question. Can you give a message to all your fans, or fellow Earthlings, who are really hoping that you would be Lindsay Coffee's successor next yes. month? Well, I just wanted to say thank you to every single person who has supported me along my pageant journey. It has been, it meant so much to me. And especially with this pageant, I have felt more love and support from the fans than ever before. And that really has been inspiring me to work my hardest and really represent myself at Miss Earth USA. So hopefully I get that opportunity to go to Miss Earth and make you all proud and just know that I'm working as hard as I can to be worthy of all of your love and support. And I really appreciate everything that you have been doing for me thus far. Thank you so, so much. On that note, Marissa, thank you so much. It has been it has been a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you. Really thank serious. You, I, you just made my my high regard for Miss Earth store higher with 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 contestants like you, with candidates like you who are really passionate in truly what they believe in. So stay safe, and I Thank can't you. wait for you to soar high, higher than ever next month. I hope it's it's really you know third times a charm, like you know Miss Earth. So hopefully. hopefully. All right. Stay safe. Virtual hugs and kisses all the way from Manila. <laughs> Happy holidays. Merry advance. Merry Christmas, Marisa. Merry I hope Christmas you're to you a wonderful well. holiday Stay season. Safe, everyone. <laughs> yeah. God bless. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.